Hello and welcome to episode 51 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Go ahead, Brandon. Ask your question. What's going on, Nick? I, I'm having a surgical procedure done on Monday. What are you getting done? <laughs> Butt implants. No. Breast augmentation. Where is this coming from? No, I'm just joking. Uh, um, remember when we were in Reno? And you noticed that there was some blood on the bed, and I told you that I was on my period. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's because I have a cyst the, on my oh, ass. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I went to see a doctor about it about a month or two ago, and they said his cysts are generally caused by, like, ingrown hairs. So what he did was he used a pair of tweezers and plucked all the hairs out of the area, used a little trimmer, shaver thing, and shaved all the hair out around there. And said, you keep doing that for about a month or two. If it's still there, then we'll have to take further measures. And it's yeah. still there. So on Monday, I'm getting it removed. So that's what's up. That's what's going on. And I'm going to come watch Raw with him and <laughs> make sure his post-op is okay. No, cool. <laughs> they act like it's no big deal. Like They're like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll be done in like 30, 40 minutes. And uh, you'll be able to drive home. No drugs. They're going to numb it. Local. I'm sure they'll numb like the, what yeah. they call the local. Anesthetic. Yeah, but not, not anything. Put you under. Yeah. Our mom had one of those on her, like right on the small of her back, and it was huge. Like they had to pack it with gauze, and Uncle Ron had to change her gauze out like every, twice a day, I think. Mm. So hopefully yours isn't that bad. I hope not, because my wife's not here. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll have Rosa do it. I, I, I'll have Link do it. I could uh, lance it for you right now if you want. Just pay me the copay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was just a copay. I have a deductible plan. That's why I, oh, I'm hoping it's not going to be too much. <laughs> but whatever. It needs to get done. Got any treasure? Yes, I do. Um, How many items do you have? Two. I have two as well. Okay. Let's get to it. Find it out. So, did you do the dimple switcheroo? No, they put tape on it, so I couldn't. If you pull, pull it off the sticker, the price tag would come off so they would know. I think they're getting privy to it. Yeah. So, the dimple switcheroo is something that I came up with. Uh, what I did was I take a game that they overcharge. Uh, for instance, this one game had a price tag of eight ninety nine for a Nintendo cartridge at Dimple. Usually they run between ninety nine cents and four dollars, so they're trying to make money off the NES games. So what I then did was find another game for cheaper the price and switch the price tags. Cause their stickers come off heck of easy. Yeah, they do. All right, so I'll go first. Now, you may say this is second generation, when in fact it's actually like fourth. But I, I count Nintendo as first. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> because it's like up to the eighth or ninth generation now. No, it's on the sixth. No. Nintendo? It doesn't start with Nintendo. Why not? It doesn't. That's how people people have it. No, start. that's not. I don't care how people that's start. What, that's what I'm saying. I count it as Nintendo, but in actuality, this is like fourth gen. That's bullshit. This is a Sega cart, by the way. Yeah, Sega Genesis is second generation. <laughs> because on the, on the quiz up challenges, they'll <laughs> say like what generation was the N64, uh -huh. and of course I picked third. Yeah, it was like f fifth, I think. Fuck those people. <laughs> <laughs> First generation will always be Nintendo and Master System. Second will be Genesis and Super Nintendo. Third will always be Saturn and 64, so forth and so on. Oh. <laughs> Road Rash 2. What's that worth? $7. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Here's my first. <laughs> Do we have this? Uh, uh, yeah, we do. We do have it. Uh, what? Super C? Damn straight. Oh, man. That, that one held an eight ninety nine price tag. Oh, that... 
is now four ninety nine. <laughs> this is like fourteen. Yep. It's tight. Here's my second item. Cuber. What's that worth? Seven. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we own this game or not, but I had to get it. It looks clean. Yeah. This is all, another NES cart. Clash at Demon Head? Yes. I think we ha I think I don't think we have this. We might actually. No, I don't think we do. Check it out. 12 bucks. So, guess I lose. Can I spin the Wheel of Punishment first? I could spin it for you. So you get three, right? Yes. Eight. Shockmaster. <laughs> Two. Shockmaster. One. Corndog. I'm going to choose Shockmaster. All right. You want me to roll mine? Yeah. Six. Taxi. One. Corn dog. <laughs> Four. Five dollars towards bank. Oh man. <laughs> I'll think about it. Let's get the shopmaster hooked up. So I have attached the Shockmaster onto Brad's neck and back and shoulder. There's four probes. Look for this on video on Nick's YouTube channel. And I'm sure it will be linked on Facebook at Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Uh, timer? For 15 seconds? I think Nick's... I can, I can do it. Oh, okay. Just do, do you remember how to do it? Yeah, it's push these. No, I think you have... Oh, you, you already turned it on? Yeah. No, not needles. <laughs> not needles. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> the needles won't make it spaz as much. That's fine. I'll, I'll change it. Oh, man. Ready to time? Say what? Oh! Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, mm. 10 seconds. Oh! Oh! oh. Is it good? Oh. Yeah! Oh. I told you it's been 10 oh. seconds. Oh. <laughs> 10 seconds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It hurt. Oh, <laughs> you didn't take it like a man, like Brian. <laughs> Tried. <laughs> so, what are you going to choose? Taxi. Yes. So, top five for the week. Pretty interesting top five. I'm going to say right now, my top five sucks horribly. Oh, man. I, I've i been working on this since Tuesday, and I couldn't come up with anything. Interesting. Well, I'm sure Nick and I will hopefully save the day. Yeah, I hope so, because mine, well, I have some pretty good ones, like the ones I actually thought about, but uh -huh. other, other than those, our top five this week are top five coolest or suaviest video game characters. I thought it was suavest or ladies man character. Yeah. Okay. Same thing. Because if you said coolest, then I could have came up with coolest all the live long day. <laughs> you want to roll the dice? Who goes first? Oh, yeah. Uh, Nick gets one. Brad gets seven. I get two. Okay. So I'll go first. Number five on my list. Is gonna have to be Bones Jackson from Mutant League Football. <laughs> <laughs> He's got one hell of a touchdown dance. <laughs> He's such a smack talker. Here's some of his greatest lines. <laughs> when a touchdown is scored, he'll say, Next to rising from the grave, I like scoring touchdowns best. Or, when I roll these bones, I always come up six. <laughs> <laughs> when he scores a field goal, he'll say, Easy as falling into an open grave. <laughs> if a live guy kicked a ball that hard, he'd get ligament damage. But who needs ligaments? <laughs> when he kills a referee or <laughs> someone on the opposite team, 
He'll say, inside that guy's suffocating flesh, there was a skeleton like me screaming to get out. I was only happy to set him free. <laughs> and the best one, life is sweet, but I'm watching my weight, so I'm on a steady diet of death. Oh, man. <laughs> so, with each of my top fives, I put down everyone's go-to pickup line if they pick up on women. <laughs> Bones Jackson. <laughs> Did you make these up? Yes. Okay. His pickup line. Hey, baby. I'm just one big walking boner. Oh, man. <laughs> it's pretty direct. What does he really sound like when he says that, though? He goes... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and of course the goblins. Bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> that was my number five. <laughs> uh, number five on my list hails from the WWF world, and his name is Razor Ramon. <laughs> <laughs> I put Fandango as my honorable mention, <laughs> but I didn't put anyone from the wrestling on there because it just didn't make sense to me. Did I already apologize for saying my list heck of sucks? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's mine. Rico Suave, Razor Ramon, number five. Well done. <laughs> My number five runs around in a green tunic, a green pointy hat, and some white tights and a variety of different boots. <laughs> Sounds kind of like a dork, right? But if pointy ears are your thing, this Helion is for you. My number five is Link. Did I mention that this dude saved the kingdom of Hyrule countless times and is truly a master with a sword? <laughs> Whether it's a magic or a magical sword, <laughs> Link can slay anything. And even though he almost never speaks, just think of how the lady swooned for him. Zelda, being a bit of a masochist, was once caught saying that she would like for Link to use his red candle to burn wax all over her naked torso. Well, I did not hear, I did not see that. He must have missed that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Which game was that in? Uh, uh, Twilight Princess, I think. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't Wind Waker. <laughs> But it's more than just the princess. Remember Malin from Ocarina of Time? Oh, yeah. She expressed an interest in incorporating Epona into their sexual endeavors. What? I even heard that Rudo, princess of the Zoras, was interested in getting her fins on him. <laughs> so my number five is Link. Dang, and she like lays hella eggs and like, <laughs> Link, spray your seed on my eggs. <laughs> she actually did hit on him in the game. Remember that? Yeah. Like, so the only reason she didn't pursue it further is because she became one of the, um... Sages. Or yeah, whatever. one of the sages, and she became responsible for, like, the the water realm or something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> Number four on my list is going to have to go to Duke Nukem. <laughs> After Doom got way popular, first-person shooters became a rave. In the 90s, there seemed to be a slew of first-person shooters coming out. Great games like Hexen and Duke Nukem rode on that wave. <laughs> Duke Nukem is your typical worried-out anti-hero. Aliens invaded his hood, and he did his best to stop them. He stole all his one-lighters from the great Bruce Campbell. He did. Uh, to name a few, I've come to kick ass and chew bubblegum, and I'm all out of gum. Give me some sugar, baby. <laughs> and hell to the king, baby. If he's in the bar picking up on chicks, I'm sure he'd say a little something like, Hey baby, I may have small balls, but I could give you a big load. <laughs> so my number four is Duke Nukem. Number four on my list hails from Spider-Man and X-Men Arcade's Revenge, and his name is Gambit. <laughs> 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 Mostly anyone from Louisiana that's Cajun is a ladies' man. <laughs> <laughs> and he's no exception. <laughs> he has those glowing red captivating eyes. <laughs> and he could work wonders with his card tricks. Girls do like magic tricks. It's a good one. That's what uh, Antonio Sfondiari used to use to get all the chicks. Have you ever tried magic on Melissa? 
I don't I don't know any magic tricks. I wonder how that would work. The hidden penis. <laughs> Guess where it is. <laughs> You have anything else to say about Gambit? I do not. All right. So my number four character, he has spiky blonde hair, big blue eyes, an enormous phallic symbol known as the Buster Sword. Oh, I thought you were <laughs> Super Saiyan <laughs> Goku. That's gay. <laughs> so I'm talking about Cloud from Final Fantasy VII, of course. He's a bit confused in the head, but his good looks, brawn, and skill gained through the soldier first class training make him quite alluring to Aerith and Tifa. Cloud could have his pick. Those two girls were hecka wet for Cloud. You know they wanted to have Cloud rain down some of his, some of his cum. Especially, oh, especially, especially Tifa with her ample bust. Titty fuck? Yeah. How did I miss all of this? Like in the games. <laughs> well, they, they, they talked a little bit. In the end... They, during, you know when you sleep in the inn and like you don't know what happens. But you don't get to see cum raining down on tits. I said you know they want oh. it. It's just implied. It's hella implied. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it would be cool to use the, the cloud raining cum thing. Oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> That's my number four is Cloud from Final Fantasy Seven. Number three on my list. Is gonna have to be Michael Jackson from Moonwalker. <laughs> In one of the levels, you actually fight a whole gang just by yourself in a pool hall. And what happens? He makes them all dance with his suaviness. <laughs> his go to pickup line Here's some money, little kid, and I'll tell your mom to oh, shut her man. mouth. <laughs> <laughs> It worked for him like three times. <laughs> he didn't do it. Oh, man. That's, that's like saying OJ didn't do it. It's different. Michael Jackson's white. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting game is riddled with sexy characters and Street Fighter is no exception. I'm not talking about Dan. <laughs> I'm not talking about Vega. I'm definitely not talking about Dalsim. <laughs> I'm talking about Zanjeev. <laughs> <laughs> Women love men with chest hair. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Vladimir Putin. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what I was thinking. Rusev. Man, she's got a freaking leash on him, though. Rusev Mashka. <laughs> 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 so I, I generally wouldn't consider characters from movies as legitimate video game characters, <laughs> but GoldenEye 007 was so good and James Bond is so suave that I had to include him on this list. This particular incarnation of James Bond was portrayed by the dapper Pierce Brosnan. Most people know the Bond character as a double agent for the British Secret Service, typically seen in a tuxedo with a silenced PP7 in hand. But James Bond can have any woman that he wants. But in this game, the two women who can't take their eyes off of him are Xenia Onatop, an ally of the crime syndicate known as Janice, and Natalia Simonova, an innocent computer programmer who got caught up in Janice's web. You know, he banged both those chicks. So. With his PP7. Yeah, <laughs> PP7. <laughs> I, I had a, like a cool like story about how he banged both of them, but I seem to have lost it. Just know that he banged both of them for sure. Didn't, I think in the movie, like, he kills Xenia during, like, a sex sex scene or something like Xenia that. Xenia kills some old guy in the beginning. Oh, like, maybe that's what it is. Crushing his ribs with her thighs. That's right. But I couldn't I couldn't keep James Bond off this list. He's too suave. So that's my number three. It was so hard choosing between these two characters. Like, extremely hard. Number two on the list... He's going to have to be Dante from Devil May Cry. Equipped with a, with a flowing red coat that he wears open to show his bare chest, white hair, and a razor-sharp tongue. He's egotistical demon slayer of the Devil May Cry series, and he's equipped with twin pistols named Ebony and Ivory, a badass sword named Alistair, and a lightning guitar named Nevin. He gets the guitar from him killing a vampire succubus demon, and he uses it to summon bats and electricity, which is awesome. His go-to pickup line, 
He doesn't have to say much. <laughs> All he has to say is get naked, open your legs, and hold on tight. <laughs> oh, yeah, jackpot. <laughs> you know, I was contemplating putting him up on my list, but I don't like any of his games, so I didn't put him on my list. Are you fucking serious? What? Part 3 was hella good, and part 1 was awesome. No, I didn't like him. Because <sighs> it's like Bayonetta. I don't like games like that. Number two on my list, The Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> He's not suave. The Rock. Oh, I didn't even think about him. <laughs> no. What's one thing you want to do after killing a Hydra? <laughs> Go fuck some women. That's what Kratos does from God of War. <laughs> In every incarnation of that game, he always ends up having sex with women. It's hilarious because just out of nowhere, you just got done beating a boss, and then there's two women laying on the bed naked. And then so you have to, of course, the camera pans off screen, but not before you get to see their boobs. <laughs> so you have, to, when you, so I have to play a sequence, whatever it shows, a button on the controller, you have to push it. So that, of course, there's triangle, square, circle, and X. And then after a few combos, you have to swing the joystick around on the PlayStation. and The like, analog. Yeah, the analog in a 360 degrees motion. And then if you mess up, the women kick him off the bed, leaving them unsatisfied. But if you're able to go through the full motions, they climax hecka hard. At the same time. Is this for real? Are you making this up? No, this is for real. real. Oh, really? I, know, I didn't. I never played through one of those games. I don't remember that. Yeah, just look up God of War sex scenes. Okay. I once had a guy I used to work with in collections named Brandy Borders. He said that his cousin gave him a VHS tape of that sex scene loop over and over again. <laughs> Why not just watch porn? I don't know. I guess it wasn't big back then. You had to, like, pay for porn back then. <laughs> like, 2004, 2005. <laughs> I almost put Kratos on my list, but I never played any of his games, so that's why I didn't put him yeah. there. My number two is a master engineer in the King of Figaro Castle. Oh, oh. Egger from yeah. Final Fantasy VI. Twin brother of Sabin. He wears light blue armor, white boots, and a long blue cape with yellow trim. His uh, long blonde hair that, that he keeps in a ponytail and big blue eyes. Edgar is also very cunning. When Sabin's and Edgar's father was poisoned by the Gestalian Empire, neither man wanted to assume the throne of Figaro. They both wanted to leave the kingdom, but Edgar knew that it would be against the wishes of their father. Edgar proposed a coin flip to determine who would remain in the kingdom to take the throne. What Saban didn't know was that Edgar had flipped a double-sided coin, and Edgar sacrificed his freedom for the sake of the kingdom. But all the ladies wanted him. Celeste, Realm, and even the half-Esper Terra wanted his royal dick. <laughs> Isn't Realm like 12? Fuck yeah. <laughs> she still wanted him. Doesn't mean it was uh, it reciprocated. <laughs> Edgar's ability to use tools that he created as an engineer, one such tool is the drill, which is unblockable and ignores defense. It is said that when Celeste wants a hard fucking, Edgar attaches the drill to his manhood to really give it to her. So that's my number two is Edgar. Man, Celeste stepping out on lock, huh? Yeah. Oh, bitch. Every once in a while when she wants it really bad, oh, man. lock can't give it to her. And Locke doesn't know Berserk either, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Number one on my list is going to have to go to Leon Kennedy of the Resident Evil series. Leon has evolved over the course of the games. He first appeared in Resident Evil 2 as a naive rookie cop. He hides his emotions from Ada Wong, knows that he... She likes him or wants to pursue him, but he still plays coy and is like, I don't know what she's talking about. But he's just so naive. In part four, he is a lot more seasoned and his skills have grown sevenfold. He goes in alone on a mission to save the president's daughter from the Illuminatus cult and succeeds taking down Chief Mendez, Salazar, Sadler, and Krauser. And he even beat a really hard Verdugo. You remember those things? No. Salazar's henchman, the only way to kill him. You don't have to kill him. 
Oh, you that, could the freeze them, them and yeah. you could shoot them and man. The, they, uh, aren't they, I thought they were called regenerators. Those are different enemies. Regen, they're different. Mm. Oh man, but I'm just getting started. <laughs> In part six, he knows what he wants and he knows how to achieve it. <laughs> and he even takes out a naked spider lady who obviously wants his body. He is the epitome of madness and oozes testosterone. His pickup lines, <laughs> he has three. The first one from Resident Evil 2, he goes, What's up, Ada? I kind of like you. And if you kind of like me, I think we should... Oh, never mind. <laughs> In part four, he's like, What's up, Ada? That's right, my cock. <laughs> <laughs> And then in part six, he's like, what's up, Ada? Open up and let me give you the T-virus vaccine, a.k.a. my cum. <laughs> so that was my number one, Leon Kennedy. I think one of the swap, the definition of suave or ladies' man is trying to get women, trying to get women to do what they don't want to do. Mm. So... Do you guys think a princess would ever want to have sex in a graveyard? <laughs> no. No. But guess who gets that done? Arthur? Arthur <laughs> from Ghouls and Ghosts. Ghosts and Goblins. Opening scene, they're having a picnic in a graveyard and he's in his fucking underwear. <laughs> so you know what they just got done doing? <laughs> Anal. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I think that's pretty much the definition of what women would not want to do. Anal in a graveyard. <laughs> unprotected. At, at midnight. <laughs> during a full moon. <laughs> with the devil at the end of the stage. So that's my number one. Arthur. I think that's why the devil comes and takes Gwendolyn because they just committed sin by doing anal <laughs> on sacred ground. <laughs> 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 maybe. Maybe we should talk to Capcom about that. <laughs> He's in his underwear taking a smoke. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to come there. <laughs> Doesn't get any sexier than this guy. He wears well-fitted well pants with a large gunslinger belt. His trench coat remains unbuttoned to show off his six-pack yeah, abs. I knew, I knew who this was And he tops be. it all off with some dark sunglasses and a wide-rimmed cowboy hat. My number one is Johnny from Got Guilty Gear. He wields a wooden-handled katana, and he knows how to use it. He doesn't always dice up his opponents. Sometimes he uses the sheath sword to deliver damage. Johnny's the captain of the Jellyfish Pirates, a group sworn to help those in need, which just so happen to be young ladies. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> his, his crew consists of many potential victims of his lady-killing ways. May and Dizzy are rumored to have double-teamed him. Who knows what kind of kinky shit Dizzy did with her wings, and man, I'm sure there was some sadomasochism going on with May's anchor. So that's my number one, Johnny from Guilty Gear. Tight. Didn't he suck Bridget's dick? Oh, man. That was a low point. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was confused. <laughs> you guys have any honorable mentions? Nah. <laughs> no. I got a couple. Uh, Dan Smith from Killer7. Great game, real cool character. Uh, he takes on the form of seven different personalities. That game is fucking weird. It is weird, but it's hella good. Um, there's one main guy, Harmon Smith, and he has seven personalities, and he actually changes into different people. He morphs into them. Dan Smith is one of them. He's pretty cool. Um, Earthworm Jim. <laughs> uh, being a talking worm in a power suit has its advantages. I had a pickup line for him because he almost made the list. <laughs> he would say, hey, baby, have you ever had a talking earthworm in your vagina? Oh, man. And of you, course, you it, don't think that would be pleasurable for him, do you? Because it's not like a <laughs> worm dick. He probably doesn't have a dick. <laughs> um, another one was Bridget from Guilty Gear. Yes. That was my honorable mention. <laughs> and under him, I had Fandango. Dishonorable mentions, I had Billy and Jimmy Lee for letting Marion get punched in the stomach so many times. <laughs> well, she wasn't in the alleyway, like, strutting around like she wanted it. I would never allow Karen to go in an alleyway. She probably snuck out. 
And then the last dishonorable mention is Mario for never being able to seal the deal with Peach. <laughs> Bowser's got more play with it, with her than he did. You know that's why she gets captured. She wants some Bowser spiky dick. <laughs> Remember the last scene of Zelda 2 when that curtain goes down yeah. on Link and Zelda? Man. <laughs> Adult Link got some. <laughs> the, the, that's when the candle comes out. <laughs> that's why you get it as your first item in the game. You hold onto it for the whole game. And then so finally you're... Kss, kss. <laughs> I recently sent out a post, um, what was the most difficult game you guys have played. And a lot of you said uh, Ninja Gaiden. Uh, so, someone said Godzilla. It was, and it, it, like Godzilla, like Monster of Monsters. Yeah. But I, I'm assuming it's pretty hard. Uh, but I kind of classified it. There's two different types of games, like Ninja Gaiden, which is fun to play, but just really hard. And then there's games that you just don't even want to play, like Ghosts and Goblins. Because I don't even want to pick that game up and try to beat it. It's just way too hard. Um, but there's a lot of cool responses out there. Thanks for everyone who contributed to the questions. So we've been getting uh, some nice quality activity on our board uh, we've got uh, and this is uh, a facebook treasure hunting yes. for nostalgia we've got uh the question that brad proposed to everyone was in your opinion what is the most difficult nes snes or genesis game so basically first or second generation uh kevin bach deltry of course the ninja gaiden or Gaiden, however you say. Uh, John Osario did agree. Alexander Hernandez said Battletoads. And that game you just have to fucking memorize. Every yeah, Battletoads is insane. And plus, remember there's warps where if you beat the level pretty fast and you get to a certain point fast, you get a warp mm -hmm. levels. But either way you put it, that bike race is hella hard. <laughs> and especially when you do it two players. Yeah. Don't even fucking think about doing it two players. Um, who else said something? Danny Grimes said Godzilla, Monster of Monsters. And, uh, yeah, it was like a chessboard. Um, kind of like a grid based. Grid. Mark Cook, he posted this fucking awesome collection he found, uh, at an Auburn auction. A bunch of Ninja Turtle toys. I was blown away by that. I wonder how much he paid for all of that. I bet you he got it only for like 10 bucks, probably. But I've been playing a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, I'm really not into like what all the cards do. I just basically play with how I used to play. So my deck's kind of old school with old cards. Uh, the I used to, Flame I, Swordsman. I do have Flame Swordsman. I'll I'll read you my um my site my fusion deck. I've got three Flame Swordsmen, three Dark Diviners. Uh, Dark Magician Girl, the Dragon Knight, because she looks sexy on a dragon. Uh, I've got Dark Fairy, Cheer Girl, I don't even know what she does. I don't use my side deck. Fairy, Cheer Girl. I guess I did a search for girl and put a bunch of girls in my side deck. <laughs> but the deck I, I'm playing recently now, I used to play a hybrid, uh... Direct damage, I guess they call it a burn deck. Mm -hmm. um, mill, which is life card damage. And final countdown, which if you play final countdown, after 20 turns you automatically win the game. So there's a lot of stall going on. But the deck I'm using now is just straight mill and stall. So I've got my needle worms, my hero shadow scouts, which when it's flipped your opponent draws three cards. Both players look at the cards and discard any spell cards. Gravekeeper's Servant. Your opponent must send one card from their deck to the graveyard to declare an attack. And a bunch of stall cards like Threatening Roar, Marshmallow, Swords of Revealing Light, Mirror Force. So um, I've got Fiendish Chain for those effect monsters. And Time Lord. Um, what's the name? Meta, Meta Eon, the Time Lord. So if you guys have any good stall, stall cards for me to use online, I've been actually doing pretty good. I play probably about five times a day, and I win between four and five times with this deck. 
there's uh, just some people that get really good draws and I'll get really crappy draws and they'll beat me. But I played a game today where a guy started with a 60 card deck against my 40 and I was still able to deck him out, which is pretty cool. So that's my Yu-Gi-Oh. So post your Yu-Gi-Oh strategies. I might not know most of them because I don't keep up with it. But um, I like the old school stuff like like uh, Kaiba's deck or Yugi's deck, Pegasus deck, um, just stuff like that, old and proper. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and play a game for you guys out there right now. We've got a little bit of time to kill. Uh, we're going to play uh, Two Lies and One Truth. We're going to tell everybody here two lies and one truth, and they have to guess which one's the truth. Kind of comical, kind of get you guys to know us a little better. Kind of a ripoff of Walt Flanagan's One True Three off of Tell Him Steve Dave. That's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'll go first. So here's my options. One, I once asked a gay guy at a sex shop what his opinion of the best dildo was. <laughs> Two. What, like, oh, can we ask questions? If you ask questions, it's going to be hard for him to continue the lie. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what you do to trip him up. <laughs> or I could ask questions at the end. Two. I once watched a seagull eat my semen. <laughs> Three. I once threw my underwear on stage at a Metallica concert. Ooh. Since I think Brandon might know this, I'm going to let Nick answer first. I think I remember hearing something about you throwing underwear on stage at a Metallica concert, so I'm going to go with that one. You are incorrect. Oh, man. It was at a Chili Peppers concert. Oh, okay. I once watched a seagull eat my semen. What? <laughs> Did you come on the bird? <laughs> no. What happened was... Uh, we were at the, our school high school parking lot, and I just got done having some sexy time in Karen's van with her. <laughs> and of course, I had co condoms. So, uh, I what we what I did with the used condom is I took it off, threw it in a McDonald's bag that was in her car, and threw it off the window. And then, so twenty minutes later, Seagull comes flying by. There's like a pack of them, and they start attacking the McDonald's bag ferociously. And the one of, they're fighting over the used condom, and one of them gets it <laughs> and takes two hops away and just starts guzzling it and eating it. <laughs> and I was just sitting there like, I think he's eating my cum. <laughs> and he was. <laughs> that was the truth. It's kind of gross. <laughs> Makes for a funny story. Yeah. You got one? No, not yet. <laughs> Brandon, do you want to go next? Sure. Uh, my first truth. Or my first lie. Lie or tr and or truth. Tru Your what first is? story. Story. Uh, there was one... When I worked at Domino's, there was once this little kid who was running back and forth after I got done mopping, making all of these foot, footprints. So, because the, the stuff we used to clean the floor, if it didn't dry in time, it would just peel the dirt from your shoes so it would get to get muddy all over again. And so, after running back and forth a few times, and I, this was near the end when I was a dick, I told the kid to stop running, and I told the mom, hey, I'm trying to mop. And then so she said, oh, you might want to put cones up so that he doesn't do it. <laughs> so when she was she was waiting for her pizza, wasn't paying attention to her kid, he did it. I tripped him with the mop. <laughs> <laughs> you could have just said, I tripped a kid with a mop on purpose. <laughs> the condensed version. <laughs> oh. The second story, uh, just recently... We had new neighbors move in, and they have this annoying, stupid little, like, looking dog. It's one of those white dogs with all the fur on its face, like the, it looks retarded. 
I don't know what kind of <laughs> breed of dog it is, but it was barking at me. And so I like, I made it flinch and then it ran up to me and barked on it. So I stepped on its foot. <laughs> 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 I was in my bare feet. <laughs> and my third story, the first vagina I ever saw was from a prostitute. Oh, man. You guys want to ask some questions? Would a stripper be considered a prostitute? No. Oh, man. <laughs> what was the prostitute's name? I don't remember. <laughs> so we're supposed to interrogate you? If you want to. To try to crack you? If you want to. <laughs> <laughs> what color was the kid that you tripped? He was Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> what color was he? I guess he was brown. I'm sorry. Let me ask her next question properly. He was brown, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> did you say slow down speedy gonzalez no <laughs> but i did find it funny that of course b fitting the stereotype the mexican ordered a hawaiiana pizza <laughs> they always order that what is a hawaiiana just ham and pineapple in hawaiian but they call it hawaiiana <laughs> <laughs> So you tripped a kid, you stepped on a dog's foot. Mm -hmm. Why did you find it necessary to point out that you were not wearing any shoes? Was there a reason why you weren't wearing shoes? Yeah, because I walk around barefoot sometimes. And if I would have worn shoes, I don't think I would have stepped on his foot because it would have been probably would have broke his foot. I'm going to go with that one. That one's the truth? Yeah. What was the last one again? The prostitute. The prostitute. <laughs> the first vagina I ever saw was from a prostitute. I think the first vagina you ever saw was at Brad's bachelor party. I didn't see it. You didn't see it? When she did her toy show, I was nowhere near it. Or let me let me specify open vagina. Open vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't think that's correct. <laughs> was she a prostitute at the time? Who? The prostitute. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Were you uh, propositioning her? She was propositioning me. <laughs> did she make a sell? <laughs> no, she did not. <laughs> <laughs> the first one, I, 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 I kind of like the first one. The Mexican Hawaiian yeah. pizza? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say the dog. It was a prostitute. No way. What? You don't remember that story? I guess I never really told you. I thought the first vagina you saw was Jessica's. I don't know. She was. It wasn't open. It was just. <laughs> oh, open. <I> <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean open? I mean, I know what. You, I think I know what you mean, but like spread eagled. <laughs> Wanting entry. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you pay first. <laughs> so what was the circumstances? Why so, wh why were you with a prostitute in, in a position where she could spread her legs for you? So uh, when I used to close the dominoes off of Mather Field, <laughs> uh, what we would do is if it was a pretty far delivery, I would pay out of pocket. And then take the delivery with me, drop it off, and then collect the money and just put it in my pocket. So I didn't have to go back to the store and do all that. So I walked up to this dingy hotel. It was right off of, you guys probably know it, right off of uh, Howe and 50. It's like the... Oh yeah, I've seen it. So I walk up and I knock on the door. And uh, she opens the door. And she's pretty hefty. <laughs> Um, and she was like, hi, what's your name? Talking to me. And she was like, you can bring the pizza in and set it on here. So I set the pizza on the nightstand. And then she was like, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> and I, I was lying. I said, yeah. <laughs> and then, so she's like, you want to sit down? And 
I don't know why I said yeah. So I <laughs> sat down and we were talking and um, she was talking about her kids, how she wanted a bunch of kids because she's Mormon. Oh, gross. <laughs> so one thing led to another. She was like, do you want to have sex? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that was her pickup line. Yeah, basically. Do you want to have sex? And I said, no, not really. And then so <laughs> she was where she was, she sat up on the, she sat down on the bed and spread her legs and she was wearing a skirt, but no underwear. <laughs> she was like, are you sure? I'm like, oh, I don't have any money. <laughs> and then she said, it's okay. I said, all I have is my card. She said, there's an ATM machine downstairs. Oh, man. So I was like, all right, let me go get money out. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> so I go downstairs and she, and we, and I was like, you wait here. No, she has to come with me. Because you were just going to try to bell on yeah. her. Yeah. So we, you couldn't just say no. You're like, okay, let's go get I didn't want to let, I didn't want to let her down. <laughs> so we take the elevator down and she's like, oh, we're really going to do this. Like, this is her fucking first time. <laughs> because I told her, I was like, I've never done this before. I've never had sex. She's like, oh, yes, you have. I'm like, no, I haven't. <laughs> she told you. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so we take the, it, and it's like one thirty in the morning, probably two o closer to two o'clock now because, uh, we used to close at one on Fridays and Saturdays. And so, uh, I get downstairs and I'm like, it was a cop. She's like, we're really going to do this now. <laughs> yeah. So I said, all right, you wait here. I have to go to my car and get my wallet. So I go to my car and I just bail. I just leave. And after that, I went to the gym to try to get my mind off of it. <laughs> it was so awkward. I remember hearing that story. I don't remember the revealing her vagina to you. Before yeah. Before. Yeah, she she showed it. <laughs> and Did it, she have a landing strip? I think she was completely bald. I'm not sure. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm not very good at coming up with lies, sorry. It's alright. Maybe you could work on it for next week. Possibly. So I won't reveal anything right now then. <laughs> we yeah. spoil it. I'll, I'll look forward to it. Yeah. Everyone out in the podcast world, wait until next... What is it? Truth or false or something? Would you call it two lies and a truth? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we could come up with a better name for it. <laughs> I do have a jerk of the week, though. Oh, man. What's that? T it Tim and I went and played disc golf today. Have, have either of you ever, like, been golfing or anything like that before? No, I never golfed. Uh, we, we golfed before. Well, we were on it. We went to a park in William Lund Park, a uh, little area, and we were little, and we kept taking the golf balls and throwing them and the old guys were getting mad at us. That's close if we went to a golf field. Well, if you go to a golf course, like even the cheapest golf course, regular golf course that would be that I'm referring to, uh, they have what's called a marshal. He just rides around in his cart, going by every hole, making sure that people are following the rules. For one thing, you're not supposed to have a party more than four people. So if they're if a group of more than four people is on one hole at the same time, they they break them up into two different groups or whatever. They make sure that they you know they're not clowning around, so the groups that are behind them aren't having to wait for them. Things like that. So there's marshal for disc golf. That's what I'm saying. Oh, they're okay. not. There's not a marshal for okay. disc golf. <laughs> Uh, so disc golf is free generally. Yeah, I mean they're at public parks. You don't have to pay. So oh, that's cool. You wouldn't expect for there really to be a marshal there to uh, enforce any sort of rules. But there's still a code of ethics when you go to play disc golf. It's kind of very similar. Just uh, you know, keep a good pace of play. Don't have too many people. It happens all the time. And those are my jerks of the week. Today, today it wasn't too bad. Uh, we went to a place in Lodi, and there's not very many people there at all but there was one old he's not old he's maybe in his 50s really early 60s i would probably say mid 50s but somehow he came out of nowhere and he he was in front of us like he was on the whole head of us we're like where'd that guy come from and we're the rest of the time he was in front of us and he was just heck of slow i i'm not so mad at him 
in particular because he was just an old guy out there having a good time. Eventually, we just skipped a hole and, and passed him. But it happens all the time, especially with disc golf. They're notorious for for smoking pot, uh -huh. and it just they ever after every hole they sit at the sit at the tee pad where you're supposed to throw your disc, and they just smoke pot there. Yeah, <laughs> and they won't throw the disc until you you're actually there, like waiting for them. It's, it's just so annoying. It's just bad ethics, and that's definitely my joke of the week. They just waste so much time there, and it, it, if they're wasting time, it's also wasting our time. It's so, so old, annoying. Old people smoking pot. <laughs> it's not old people smoking <laughs> pot. It just happened to have been an old person today. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> what, he, he wasn't smoking, though? No, nah, oh, he just okay. looked like he was out there having a good time. And he was the only one out there, but like he didn't have a group? He, he, no, there was like almost no one out there. There was an old older group, which may, they might have violated the four-person max rule, but we just we didn't even ever come in contact with them because we just went a different way when we saw them. Hmm. But generally, I mean, if you go to like a disc golf course where there's a lot of people playing, every hole will have a group on there. And if, if it just takes one group to slow everyone behind them down. So that's why hmm. the marshal is really important on a golf course to, to prevent that from happening. But no such thing exists at a disc golf course. You should get a sheriff badge <laughs> and be the marshal. Like, you put it on if you're, like, messing, being stupid. That would be cool. Like, one of those six-pointed sheriff badges <laughs> from, from the 1800s. Heck, yeah. I'd be down with that. And they're like, who are you? Like, I'm the marshal. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. I'm the marshal. <laughs> you're under citizen's arrest. <laughs> So the next uh, WWE event is uh, Money in the Bank, right? Yep. It's two Sundays yes. away? Two weeks away? Yes. Do either of you want to host it? Will you be back by then? I'm going camping, and I will be back Sunday afternoon. Probably early Sunday afternoon. I'll host it. All right, cool. Hopefully I won't have a soccer game that conflicts with it. A lot of times that because it's my family. Basically, my whole family's going. They'll either cancel the soccer game or make it a really late one. Or I, I imagine they'll probably get canceled, mm -hmm. just because everyone will be coming home from camping. Probably not going to want to play soccer. Yeah, either. exactly. So that's cool. I'm looking forward to that one. So they're not having a money in the bank match, just the title for the title. Yeah, I was kind of wondering that myself. Uh, all the other ones that I've watched, there's always two Money in the Bank matches. Oh, okay. Like, one was for the World Championship and one was for the Heavyweight Championship. And then a couple of the older ones, they had it divided between Raw and SmackDown. But I don't know what they're going to do this time. I want to see the briefcase. I like Sandow's briefcase. It's a little elegant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to have some type of Money in the Bank, money in the bank contract. Maybe they'll do that match first and then the championship after and just not have the person cash it in. Maybe at SummerSlam. All right, well, that'll do it for episode 51 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Happy hunting.